So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome back to the channel. Today we got the iPhone 10s versus the iPhone 11 speed test. Let's begin with the boot up of both of these phones in three, two, and one. And the 10s Max is last year's phone rocking the Apple A12 Bionic chipset. And many people have been asking, Nick, why don't you go ahead and compare the 10s Max to the 11? They're around the same price point. I kind of want to see how they perform next to each other. So we got the A13 Bionic on the right and this time unlike the 10r the 11 actually has the same amount of ram at four gigabytes but on ios 13.3 the iphone 10s max beats the iphone 11 on the boot up that doesn't mean it's going to win every other test but it does win at least when you do turn it on okay so when it comes to face id apple did update this system for the iphone 11 and 11 pro to be a little bit better on different angles and speed but i'm not seeing too much of a difference here with face id for the 10s max and the iphone 11 so you see when i do look at them it seems to respond and react about the same way so not a big deal of difference but i have noticed that like if it's really dark like this is really good lit situation the 11 will be a little bit quicker so let's go ahead and do those side by side now or top and bottom three two one and you could see they just respond at about the same time. So I wouldn't say that buying either one of these is going to give you that much of a different face ID experience. But I found that just in darker situations, the 10s Max would miss a little bit more. Not very often, but just a little bit more than the iPhone 11. But it's pretty rare for either of them to miss as long as you're looking at the phone. So just giving you a quick confirmation on software. As of the recording of this video, we're running 13.3 here for the iPhone 10s Max. And over here on the iPhone 11, this guy is also running 13.3. Okay, guys, so we've arrived at the application portion of this speed test. You can see everything closed out for both devices. Let's go ahead and begin with calendar in three, two, one. And you could see the iPhone 11 just a hair faster, very smooth on both on the gestures. Let's go into weather and you could see very close performance so far. Let's go into the clock and you could see equal once again. Once we get out of these Apple apps, we'll see if iPhone 11 could pull ahead. Three, two, one. And you see very similar performance. Let's go into Instagram. Three, two, one. And both are connected to the same Wi Fi network and you've seen a very very similar performance even here on instagram so i mean this is this is why the iphone 10s max is still a very good phone as well because it does fly through every process you could throw it with the a12 but you're also getting a more premium body a better screen than the iphone 11 but if you want that better camera uh, you might want the iphone 11 but you can see social media performance pretty good let's go into twitter and you could see that iPhone 11 had that one slightly. And we can go over here. Let's go into my profile, three, two, one. You could see very similar stuff. Look like the 11 was a little bit faster to load that up. But again, the performance is very, very close on both. Let's go into Pandora. And you could see that is first, look like on the 11, just a hair faster to listen. Let's go into Best Buy. And you can see, again, it's so minuscule, the performance difference, just so tiny that if you were deciding between these on this ground alone, we're not seeing the speed increases here, at least in your everyday things you're going to open, you're going to scroll through. We're not seeing that here so far. Let's go into eBay. And you can see eBay first there for the 11 by just a hair, not enough again to make a big difference. Let's go into my eBay and you could see not much of a difference there. So, I mean, this is why the 10S Max still is a good option if you just don't wanna pay for the new 11 Pro Max. Let's go into Amazon, three, two, one. And you could see Amazon definitely, ooh, that was close. Call that one down below. I think the 10S Max might've been ahead. I might be wrong there though. But you can see just scrolling through the application, both are extremely smooth. I'm still looking out for the new 120 hertz displays next year or 90 hertz, whatever they're gonna be. That would be beautiful. Let's go into the game Dead Trigger, three, two, one, and see which one can load this thing up first. 
So let's hit play, three, two, one. And I will say that I do appreciate the experience of gameplay on the iPhone XS Max a little bit more, just because it's a bigger screen and it's OLED. So it's got better color reproduction and things like that. So it's just funner to play games on the iPhone XS Max in my opinion. But because you have the A13, you might be able to play heavier titles a little bit further down the line, but that's not gonna be noticeable until years and years later. So let's go into Motor Combat, three, two, one, and see which one could load this up first, at least this first fight page. And both of them are very fast at loading games, but they also both have very good graphic performance. And a lot of great titles for both of these systems, um, they're both the same system, both of these phones. Uh, so either one you go with, you're gonna have a good gaming experience. But again, with that OLED screen, I do think the iPhone XS Max is a funner, just a better phone to use for gaming just because of the screen alone. So looks like the 11 was slightly ahead there and this is pretty graphically intensive to load that up. So you could see that the A13 is a better performer there in gaming. Once you start getting into the graphically intensive stuff, the A13 will pull ahead just a little bit as of right now. So what I want to do now is see if either one of these phones will reload these applications by just going back through those applications, see if we get any pauses or delays. So Motor Combat, Little bit there on both of them. It did pause that application. So four gigs of RAM, not the most here on iPhones. Let's go into Dead Trigger. And you can see it did pause that game. Uh, let's go into Amazon. And uh, pretty good there. Let's go into eBay. Had that one ready to go. Let's go into Best Buy. That was a slight reload. So you can see, I do think some future iPhones should get a little bit more RAM. Uh, some iPhone, or these iPhones just don't have uh, the same type of RAM as like Android devices with like 12 gigs. So you do get uh, this kind of illusion where you open the application and it seems like it's open, but it's kind of paused. And then by the time you go to scroll, they kind of already have it loaded up. So uh, it doesn't really always hold everything, but it kind of gives you that feeling like it is there. So you still don't have really much to complain about. It still does do a very good job at uh, just keeping those applications running smoothly for you all the time, even if it's not 12 or 16 gigs of RAM on your device. So we're gonna do two rendering tests, one in iMovie and one in LumaFusion. We'll begin with the iMovie export as this export is running the lower uh, amount of video, 51 seconds at 1080p. So let's go ahead and share this export. Let's go to save video and we're gonna save this thing here in HD 1080p. Let's see how fast they can do it. Three, two, one. And I'm hoping that the XS Max does great, but I would like to see the 11 beat it just because it is the newer phone. So let's see which one can save this project first. It looks like the 11 is a little bit ahead there, but not by much. Maybe the XS Max will win it? Okay, so you kind of seen right there that iMovie on both of these is a boss in performance. Not a big disparity in that one. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and see if we can get a difference here in Luma Fusion. I do have a 4K60 project in here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit share on the 10s Max. Share here, we'll do movie, movie. We'll go to photos, we'll save it to the photos. We'll do at 60 FPS as you can see right there. And we'll do at 60 FPS here. So let's go ahead and hit share, three, two, one and see how long it can take to write this movie on both phones. So about 27.02 megabytes, so not huge, but it's still a process, so let's see which one can get this application done first. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit there, bring the phones down a smidge, and uh, let's see how they're doing. Pretty close again. The 10s Max doing great as well. So you see in the iPhone XS Max did excellent. It did like win by just a hair and they're both very fast phones and both of them can do 4K rendering. Both of them can do the 1080. These Apple A12 and A13 chips are beasts. So really there's not a big difference here even in more powerful stuff right now. That's why a lot of people are just telling you that you know you probably don't need to upgrade right now unless you want the camera or the battery because the processor improvements are not as big as they used to be. But the A13 will show you in this Geekbench 5 
why it's still on top of the game because it benchmarks a little bit higher than the A12 and we're gonna show you that here. Let's run this benchmark and I'll be back with the final scores. So you can see right here that it's not a major upgrade here in the single core on the benchmark, but a pretty substantial step up in the multi. So yeah, it benches higher than the A12, but the A12 is already benching very good. And if you're wondering why these scores are lower, this is Geekbench 5, the scoring system has changed. You might be thinking of Geekbench 4 when the scores were a lot higher, they have changed the scoring system. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the iPhone 11 definitely benchmarks higher. So yeah, technically we know it's a newer phone, it's the faster processor. But if you're buying these phones right now, processor, performance, video rendering, that's probably processor, performance, gaming, video rendering, multitasking, all this stuff is not going to be that much different. Scrolling even, you're not going to notice nothing besides the iPhone 11's different colors. It's different design and uh, also maybe it's camera, definitely the wide angle. You will notice that. So if you guys want to see a full comparison between these two, we already broke down the smaller 10s and the iPhone 11. Let me know down below. I know there's just so many iPhones and just so many to kind of like break down and analyze and see which one is better. And, you know, these are hard decisions sometimes which one to buy because unlike before there's not just one iphone anymore there's tons of them so we kind of gotta you know help you out there thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already nick here helping you to master your technology i will catch you all in the next episode thank you very much for watching be sure to be well and peace